The speed of light is a theoretical limit that cannot be matched or exceeded by any object with mass. Only photons, massless particles, can reach this limit. Let's imagine you have the means to get as close as possible to that speed. But what happens if you travel at the speed of light? The universe is strange, but it becomes even stranger when you travel at light speed. You'll see this now. As you know, time and space aren't constant as you might think. The distance between two points varies, depending on how fast you're moving, and the same goes for the speed at which time passes. It's not always the same. This is the most important thing that happens when you go at the speed of light and the cause of all the weird effects we're about to see. As always, we must mention that it's impossible for you to travel at the speed of light because, according to Einstein's equation, you would need infinite energy. Let's assume you have some fantastic technology that allows you to travel at 99% of the speed of light. And if you were in a spaceship, what would you feel when traveling at the speed of light? The truth is, you wouldn't feel anything. One of the oldest principles in physics and Galileo's relativity states that it's impossible to feel when you're moving and when you're not. This means that, as long as you don't accelerate, it doesn't matter how fast you're moving. You won't have any sensation of speed, nor will you be able to do any experiment that allows you to know you're traveling at the speed of light. That's why the effects must always be compared with another person or object, for example, someone who stays on Earth. Right now, you're traveling at an enormous speed through space, and you don't notice it because the speed is constant. You're rotating at 1,038 miles per hour and moving at 66,615 miles per hour around the sun. In turn, you're following the sun through the galaxy at 492,126 miles per hour. But that's not all, as the entire galaxy is also in constant motion through the universe. The Milky Way is moving towards the Andromeda Galaxy at a speed of 291,113 miles per hour. It's also traveling towards the Hydra constellation, the Great Attractor, at approximately 1,242,742 miles per hour. If you add up the Earth's rotational and translational speed, and then add the speed of the solar system and that of the galaxy, you get a number of around 2,175,000 miles per hour. That's the real speed at which you're moving now, and of course, the speed is constant. If the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, you'd be thrown off into space. If you didn't die from being crushed, you'd continue flying at over 621 miles per hour, exceeding the speed of sound. Then all people and buildings would fall back to Earth somewhere. There would be practically nothing left of you, and that would be in the best case scenario. But let's get back to the speed of light. We'll assume you reach the speed of light with a gentle acceleration to avoid death from excessive acceleration. To achieve this, you'd need to accelerate for a year until reaching nearly 186,000 miles per second. In many science fiction movies, we see how the ship suddenly accelerates without considering the physical consequences of inertia, so the ship should have a highly developed system to eliminate inertia. If you were to build a ship with infinite energy and no inertia, you'd have other problems. The main obstacle to interstellar travel isn't the technological part which you could master in a matter of centuries, but the dangerous space environment, as astronauts well know, which once again highlights the fragility of the human body. If you were to move at almost 186,000 miles per second through outer space, you'd die in a matter of seconds. Although the particle density is very low in a vacuum at high speed, the few hydrogen atoms per cubic centimeter would hit the vehicle's bow with an acceleration similar to that achieved in the Large Hadron Collider, thus acquiring an energy of 10,000 sieverts per second. Considering that the lethal dose for a human being is about 6 sieverts, this radiation beam would damage the ship and destroy all traces of life inside it. According to measurements by scientists at Johns Hopkins University, no frontal shielding would be capable of protecting you from ionizing radiation. A 4-inch thick aluminum wall would absorb less than 1% of the energy and its size couldn't be increased indefinitely without compromising the energy needs of the propulsion system. In addition to atomic hydrogen, the ship would have to withstand erosion from interstellar dust, significantly increasing the chances of seeing its structure pulverized. As a solution, you'd have to settle for reaching speeds of only 10% of the speed of light in a generational ship that would allow you to travel to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, within a human lifetime, as the 4.22 light-years distance would turn into a 40-year journey. But let's suppose you've also managed to build a ship with super shielding and a technologically advanced shield that nothing can overcome, not even radiation. 
You travel at the speed of light and have a friend on Earth who will serve as a reference. The difference between your time and space and theirs will lead to very curious situations. Time and space change when you travel at the speed of light. When you travel at almost the speed of light, time passes much more slowly for you than for your friend on Earth. You won't notice it. You see your clock moving at the same speed. But when you return to Earth, you'll see that he has aged much more than you. After nine and a half months of traveling through space at 99.9999% of the speed of light, you see that more than 56 years have passed on Earth. There are three important things that happen when you travel at a speed close to that of light. The first is time dilation. At almost the speed of light, time passes more slowly for you. But curiously, you wouldn't notice it. You'd see 10 minutes pass on the clock, but for Earth observers, it could be 11.6 hours. In other words, each second on the ship is 70 seconds for your friend on Earth. The second is aberration. Your field of vision contracts until it becomes a tiny tunnel-shaped window. The third is the Doppler effect. Light waves from stars in view cluster together, so that space objects appear blue with a flash of light. In contrast, the stars left behind spread out and look reddish. If you increase your speed, the visual experience becomes so intense that it seems as if everything is vanishing. It's important to remember that this doesn't mean you're seeing reality distorted by a failure of your senses, but rather that when you travel at the speed of light, distance and time actually vary. Hundreds of experiments have confirmed that these effects are real and measurable, not an illusion or a mathematical trick. Therefore, even if you could build ships that could approach the speed of light, you'd have a big problem with time in the rest of the universe. Everything goes faster. As you've seen, Time only passes more slowly when you move at high speeds, especially when you move at speeds close to that of light. Although the crew of a near light speed ship might cross the galaxy in a few decades, during their journey, more than 100,000 years will have passed for the rest of the universe that isn't moving at the same speed. As a result, as soon as the crew returns to their home planet after completing their mission on the other side of the galaxy, all their loved ones will have died long ago and it's possible that the world will be a completely unrecognizable place for them, depending on how long they've been traveling through space. That's why traveling in this type of ship would be a one-way trip. It's not a particularly attractive scenario for astronauts who plan to see their family and friends again, but at least theoretically, you could use this method to send unmanned missions to the other side of the galaxy. This way, the problems and risks that come with life support systems wouldn't be necessary such as suspended animation for thousands of years or building a kind of generational ship where the descendants of the original astronauts are the ones who reach the selected destination. Without a doubt, the vast universe now seems too big for you to cross in our slow vessels. But surely a day will come when you discover alternative energies and technological advances that you can't even imagine. And if you're prepared for it, your future will be to navigate among the stars.